Hi, welcome to one-tailed versus two-tailed hypothesis tests. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between one-tailed and two-tailed, or one-sided and two-sided hypothesis tests. We've already broached this topic briefly in other videos. We concentrated on a one-tailed test in the video, What's a p-value? We used two-tailed tests in the video Statistical Significance and in the video Type 1 and Type 2 Errors in Hypothesis Testing. Here we're just going to talk about the difference between these two types of tests and when we might want to use each of them. We will work through an example of each. In this video, we will be assuming that you're already familiar with the basic idea of hypothesis testing. For example, we'll assume that you know what a p-value and a significance level, denoted alpha, are. If you'd like some background information on hypothesis testing, you can check out any of the aforementioned videos. We'll also be talking about measurements with Gaussian error bars, which we will review very briefly here. If you'd like more information on that topic, you might want to check out the playlist Mini Course on Error Bars, Measurements, and Decision Analysis. We will also be using some of the features of the Gaussian distribution, which are described in the video Features of the Gaussian or Normal Distribution, Part 2, Probability Bands and the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So you may find that video useful. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's begin with a very quick review of Gaussian error bars. Let's say we want to test some scientific hypothesis by measuring some quantity which we'll call Q. To illustrate in our examples later on, Q will be the average weekly sales revenue for some product. Let's call the true value of Q, Q true. When we measure Q, we'll get some result, which we'll call Q measured. However, due to measurement uncertainties, when we measure Q, we almost certainly will not obtain the result that Q measured equals Q true. We'll assume here that our measurement uncertainties are Gaussian, with a measurement uncertainty sigma Q. This means that if we did the experiment many, many times, the measured values Q measured would be Gaussian distributed around Q true, and the Gaussian would have a standard deviation of sigma Q. In particular, Q measured would fall within the range from Q true minus sigma Q to Q true plus sigma Q in about 68% of the times we conduct the experiment. 90% of experiments will return a value of Q measured within about 1.64 sigma Q of Q true. And in 95% of experiments, Q measured falls within about 1.96 sigma Q of Q true. Now that we've briefly reviewed Gaussian errors, We'll talk about the two types of hypothesis tests. We'll do two examples which involve looking at different marketing strategies at some business. We'll start with two-tailed hypothesis testing because it's a little more straightforward. And for ease of illustration in both examples, we'll use a significance level alpha of 0.05. Okay, so let's imagine that you work for a company that sells a certain product. The company has used the same advertising strategies for years and is considering changing to a new strategy. 
they would like to know if this new strategy increases or decreases their sales. This company has kept track of the weekly sales revenue for this product for quite some time. For simplicity, we'll say that their sales have been remarkably constant over this time. It doesn't show any seasonal effects or long-term trends. The weekly sales revenue is well described by a Gaussian which has a mean of $3 million and a width of $100,000. So the probability density for the weekly sales is a Gaussian centered at $3 million with a width sigma of $100,000. Now the company wants to test a new sales strategy. They want to know if the new strategy has an effect, either an increase or a decrease, on sales. They decide that they will try out this new strategy and look at the sales for the following week. And note that we're assuming that the effects of the new strategy will be immediate. Your job is to interpret the result and see if the change in strategy significantly affects the amount of sales. Let's call the average weekly sales under the old strategy S old. This was $3 million. Let's call the average weekly sales under the new strategy S new. S new is the average weekly sales that we would see if the new strategy were put in place for a long time. Okay. So you decide to do the following. You take as your null hypothesis that the average weekly sales have not changed. So S new is equal to S old, which was $3 million. You take as your alternative hypothesis that S new is not equal to S old. You take this week's sales as a measurement of S new. Okay, so you choose a significance level alpha equal to 0 0.05. This means that you will reject the null hypothesis, so that's the hypothesis that S new is equal to S old, if this week's sales fall farther away from S old than 95% of weekly sales would under the null hypothesis. We saw before that this means you reject the null hypothesis if the weekly sales fall more than about 1.96 sigma away from S old. Now sigma was equal to $100,000, so 1.96 sigma is approximately equal to $196,000. Under the null hypothesis, 95% of weekly sales numbers will fall within the blue range shown on the plot. 2.5% will fall in the white band on the left, and 2.5% will fall in the white band on the right. So you will reject the null hypothesis if this week's sales fall in either of the white tails of the Gaussian. If this week's sales fall in the blue band, you will fail to reject the null hypothesis. This is a two-tailed test. Okay, let's look at an example of a one-tailed test. Let's say the company decides not to try a totally different sales strategy. Instead, their new strategy will simply be to take their existing strategy and invest more money into it. Again, they will look at this week's sales to see if there is any change in the weekly sales as a result of the change in strategy. 
In this case, nobody at the company takes seriously the possibility that this will decrease the rate of sales. It is unclear, however, if it will increase sales. They may stay the same. Here, your null hypothesis is still that S new is equal to S old. However, if this week's sales fall substantially below S old, you don't want to take that as a reason to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so here's what you do. You still take alpha equal to 0.05. However, you decide that you'll reject the null hypothesis if this week's sales are higher than 95% of weekly sales would be under the null hypothesis. We saw before that 90% of measurements fall within about 1.64 sigma of the central value. Here, sigma is equal to $100,000. So under the null hypothesis, 90% of weekly sales figures will fall within about $164,000 of the central value of $3 million. 5% fall above and 5% fall below this blue band. This implies that 95% of weekly sales figures will fall below about $3,164,000. And 5% will fall above this blue band. You decided to reject the null hypothesis if this week's sales are higher than 95% of weekly sales are under the null hypothesis. So you reject the null hypothesis if this week's sales are above $3,164,000. So this means you reject the null hypothesis if this week's sales fall in the white band shown here on the upper tail of the Gaussian. Note that the white band here is wider than it was in the two-tailed case. You do not reject the null hypothesis if this week's sales fall within the blue region. You also do not reject the null hypothesis even if this week's sales fall well below $3 million. While such a low value for this week's sales isn't very compatible with the null hypothesis, it is even less compatible with the hypothesis that the average rate of sales has increased. Your company isn't taking seriously the possibility that sales will decrease under the new strategy. So a value far below $3 million is not interpreted as an indication that the sales rate has changed. Thus, if this week's sales fall far away from $3 million, but on the low side, you do not reject the null hypothesis. This is a one-tailed test. Okay, let's briefly summarize. In this video, we've looked at the difference between one-tailed and two-tailed hypothesis testing. Two-tailed hypothesis testing is more appropriate when looking for deviations from the null hypothesis, but no direction is specified. One-tailed hypothesis testing is useful when deviations from the null hypothesis in only one direction are considered important or of interest.